Okay, we have a good one here today from the MIT Integration B. This was 2024 quarterfinal round one problem two. We have the integral from zero to infinity of sine cubed x over x dx. And I thought this one was interesting because it's really similar to, I did one previously where we did sine x over x, but here we've got the cube root on there. And this also looks kind of similar to another problem like this where you have sine cubed x over x cubed. I think that one's a bit more complicated. For this, what I was wondering is, can I just do basically the same exact thing I did for sine x over x, which was use Feynman's trick on it? So what I want to do for this is parameterize it. We'll create another, we'll create a new variable, s. So what I'm going to do is write this integral as a function in terms of s. And when I do this, we'll start with everything we have over here already, right? We'll start with this, but then I'm going to create this other term, e minus sx. And there's a few reasons for doing this. First of all, when s is equal to zero, we're gonna have f of zero. Notice this first part just becomes one. And so f of zero, that's just gonna be the same thing as our original problems. This is gonna be our goal in the end. But this is also nice because you'll just notice that when s is going to infinity, it's gonna be zero and it's gonna zero everything out. So we're gonna have a known value we can use later. We'll just write this as f of infinity, which means s going to infinity, this value is gonna be zero. And the reason I'm doing this is because when we differentiate here with respect to s, we're going to have an x pop out. We want to cancel off this x in the denominator, kind of make it a simpler problem. So what's going to happen is we want to differentiate here with respect to s. And how I'm going to do this, we'll differentiate inside the integral as a partial. So we'll write this as d over ds. Now this part over here, this is just a constant with respect to s. So I'm just going to leave this outside of the derivative. We'll just copy that over here. And so we just need to differentiate this e minus sx with respect to s. So when we do this, what's going to happen? We're going to, derivative e minus sx is going to be just e minus sx, but then we need chain rule. Derivative of this with respect to s is going to be just minus x. But then now we can cancel off the x's here. I'll take this minus sign and bring it up front. And then what you'll notice here is this is set up, this is in exactly the right form for a Laplace transform. The only problem is it's the Laplace transform of sine cubed x. Now, I don't really know the formula for the Laplace transform of sine cubed x, but what we can do is we can kind of get to it by just using the triple angle formula for sine. Now, I derived this one in a previous video, so I'll provide a link in the description if you want to see. It's not too hard to derive this using the different angle formula. But now from here, we don't really want this value for sine cubed x. We want to isolate sine cubed x. That's how I'm trying to, that's what we, that's how we're going to transform this. Well, what I can do is add this term on both sides and subtract this term from both sides. And then we're going to have four sine cubed x equal to three sine x minus sine, sine three x. Divide by four on both sides. And then we have our formula for sine cubed x. So let me just rewrite the integral using what we have right here. And now here I distributed in the minus sign and broke this into two integrals, but now we have two Laplace transforms that we can do. We've got formulas for each of these. This one here, this is gonna be the, this is gonna be the Laplace transform of sine three X. And this right here, this will be a Laplace transform of sine X. We can use the formula that the Laplace transform of sine AT this is gonna be just s squared plus a squared with a in the numerator. Using the formula, what we're gonna have here, we're gonna have one fourth. This is gonna become with this, the a value is gonna be three. It's gonna be three over s squared plus three squared or nine. And then for the second part, three fourths in front, here a is just one, coefficients one. So this is gonna be one over s squared plus one squared. I can factor out a three-fourths and we can write our f prime s value as just one over s squared plus nine minus one over s squared plus one. So now here we have our f prime s value and we want to get back to f of zero. So what we can do on this to go from here to here, we can just integrate with respect to s on both sides. So here integrating with respect to s, three-fourths a constant. So here we can integrate with respect to s. But on both these integrals, we can just use the arctan formula. We'll bring the 3 fourths out as a constant. So integral here, this is going to be 1 over 3 arctan of s over 3. And then here, this is just going to be arctan. So this will be minus arctan of s. But keep in mind, we're still going to have a plus c on the end of this because now notice we did this as an indefinite integral. 
and we're trying to get back to a definite integral. So what we need to do is find the value for this plus C. That's where I can use this condition right here. And we, we can evaluate this when S is going to infinity. So for our F of infinity value, three fourths in front, here evaluating arc tan when S is going to infinity, this is gonna be pi over two. And the same thing is gonna happen here. That's also gonna be pi over two. And we're saying this whole thing needs to be equal to zero. Simplifying this part, distributing into three fourths, this is gonna be a pi over eight here. And then distributing the second part, that's gonna be minus three pi over eight plus C. But simplifying this, we're gonna have, we'll rearrange it, we'll have this as C. This is gonna become minus two pi over eight or minus pi over four. If this equals zero, we're saying C needs to be equal to pi over four. So we can plug this back in over here. This is gonna be our F of S value. And now that we've got our F of S, we can finish this. We wanna come back and get this value. This is just gonna be when S equals zero. Just remembering how we set this up, that when S equals zero, this piece right here is equal to one. And then we get right back to our original integral. So coming here, when we plug in zero, we have our three fourths in front, but arctan at zero, that's just zero. And then again, this one's just zero. So this piece goes away and we just have our constant on the end. So for the final solution is we just have pi over four. So there you go. Good one today from MIT 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.